When I found you in the wreckage of that ship, I considered leaving you. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking over all that we know about Netflix's sci-fi space opera, Rebel Moon. It's a story of a few against many, impossible odds, good versus evil. From Zack Snyder and his team. Following a lengthy run at Warner Brothers, fan-favorite director Zack Snyder found a new home at Netflix in 2019. After the massive success of his first movie with the streamer Army of the Dead, Snyder announced his next project for Netflix, the science fiction epic Rebel Moon. This movie, for me, existed elementally for 20 years. The colossal film is produced by Snyder's company and includes his wife Deborah and Eric Newman, who co-produced Zack's feature debut Dawn of the Dead. Joining Snyder on the screenplay for Rebel Moon was Kurt Johnstad, who worked with Zack on 300, and Shay Hatton, who co-wrote Army of the Dead. He's a goddamn zombie tiger. Zack himself tackled the film's cinematography, along with directing duties, while composer Tom Holkenborg of Batman vs. Superman soundtrack fame composed the score. It was meant to be a Star Wars film. Yep, in a galaxy not so far away, Zack Snyder intended Rebel Moon to be a Star Wars movie. Do or do not. There is no try. A lifelong fan of the celebrated sci-fi franchise, Snyder began developing the story as a pitch for Lucasfilm. Rebel Moon was meant to be a more mature take on George Lucas's historied cinematic universe. <laughs> Unfortunately, the idea was axed following Walt Disney Company's acquisition of Lucasfilm in 2012. Snyder also says that he pitched the idea to Warner Brothers on multiple occasions as both a movie and a video game, but they too declined. No! No! Fortunately, Snyder's passion project would eventually be greenlit by Netflix, with Rebel Moon being reworked into an entirely new universe. The homages to Star Wars, however, are said to still be prevalent. This isn't just pursuit of revolution. The story. Set in a peaceful colony on the border of a faraway galaxy, Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon is set to be a grandiose tale of survival and resilience. We're just farmers, we're not a threat. They won't just kill us, will they? We're delusional. You think those soldiers will show their mercy? The plot sees this harmonious colony on the moon of Velt face an existential threat against the vile and tyrannical Regent Belisarius, controller of the corrupt government's army. I mean, I think the easy way to think about Rebel Moon is a sort of David and Goliath. It's a small farming community, and a warship comes to that planet seeking to take their food to feed their soldiers. In a desperate bid to defeat the incoming evil, a young female dispatch rider, Korra, sets out to recruit warriors from across the galaxy. I am a child of war. Find warriors to fight with us. We might stand a chance. Making things personal, Korra also seeks redemption for her cryptic past in the leadership of the oppressive government. With warriors in neighboring planets ready to fight by her side, resistance becomes paramount in Rebel Moon. I'm here to make you an offer, to give you a chance at redemption. We are beyond redemption. What about revenge? Yeah! Two parts. It turns out Rebel Moon is so epic, it needs two movies to tell its story. For this movie, I think I did um, close to 4,000 drawings for the two movies together. Broken up into two parts, the first installment carries the title Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. Originally, however, the script was for just one movie, but that script was a whopping 172 pages long. I'm getting a chance to tell a story that I've been thinking about for quite a while. I was really excited about Zack. I just really value and admire his enthusiasm for the craft. According to the chairman of Netflix Films, Scott Stuber, quote, under two hour movies do better on the streaming service. This despite the fact that people binge watch a series of eight to 10 episodes in one sitting. For fear of losing character depth, Snyder didn't want the film to be less than two hours though. Thus, a compromise was made to make it two movies. The director has also spoken about the potential of spin-offs and sequels should it be successful. Something so powerful that you just want more. And it's only the beginning. The 
podcast. We're searching for soldiers for a fight against the mother world. I could help you. Rebel Moon is composed of an impressive list of established and respected actors, making it a true who's who ensemble. Taking on the role of Korra is Sofia Boutella, who is perhaps best known for her role as Gazelle in the action film Kingsman The Secret Service. Can you hold these? Please. Meanwhile, multi-time Oscar winner Anthony Hopkins voices Jimmy, a sentient mechanized robot who is described as a, quote, wild card. He's a JC-class robot, of course, voiced by the incredible Anthony Hopkins, who was like a mind-blowing honor to work with and makes this creature have a soul. In addition, actor Jimon Honsu portrays General Titus. Fans will no doubt recognize Honsu from such films as Guardians of the Galaxy and Shazam. The villainous Regent Belisarius will be played by Ed Skrine. Of course, Skrine is no stranger to playing a villain, as he was the dastardly Ajax opposite Ryan Reynolds in Deadpool. Did you really think there was a cure for that? What? You have me. Additional members of the vast cast include Charlie Hunnam, Ray Fisher, Cleopatra Coleman, Corey Stoll, Jenna Malone, and many, many others. Multiple cuts. Anybody who has followed Zack Snyder's work knows that the director is no stranger to extended cuts of his films. Kal -El, no! The director has revealed that yes, there will indeed be a separate cut of the film. This second version, however, will be R-rated. <laughs> We're gonna have to fight. Snyder clarified that the first version of Rebel Moon will be a fantasy adventure that, quote, anyone can enjoy and watch. He says that a second cut will be released at a later date, and that one will, quote, strictly be for adults. The second cut will also have an extended runtime and allow for a deeper dive into the world of Rebel Moon. Snyder also shared that the director's cut will apply to both parts one and two. All that to say, Snyder fans should clear their schedules. A new age for the universe. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Release While Rebel Moon Part 1 A Child of Fire will stream on Netflix, it will also have a limited theatrical release. Audiences can catch the movie on the big screen on December 15th, 2023. The theatrical run is also said to include several 70mm screenings in select cities. But like Snyder's previous project, Army of the Dead, the film will only screen for one week before it becomes available for home viewing on Netflix. That makes the streaming release date December 22nd, 2023. Yep, Rebel Moon is set to be a great present for movie fans, and all we can say is happy holidays to us. It's a holiday movie, obviously. There's a lot of Christmas celebrations, one of the they have to fight Santa. No, no, that's that doesn't happen. What has you most excited about Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon? Let's chat in the comments. I've been planning and working on this epic story for over 30 years. This has truly been a labor of love. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.